welcome to another, uh, welcome to the second uh, review of the evening. Uh, up this time is, we think it's pronounced Tammy Q. Um, we are not sure. Um, I don't, like, this doesn't seem to be an actual, like, is this an actual Japanese word? Like, or I don't I, think so, but I mean, it probably could be. Yeah. It could be the name of the guy you play as. I think it's the name of the guy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Tammy Q. You are an alien from a distant galaxy who is totally obsessed with blow with blowing up balloons, for some reason. Uh, having popped every last balloon on your home planet, you must now venture to other worlds in search of more balloons to pop. Inspired Disclaimer, by classic... blowing up as in detonate, not blowing up as yes, in inflate. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna cut you off right there. Inspired by classic arcade games, Tammy Q is an arcade game um, in which you have to burst all the balloons in, in a level without being killed. To do this, you face different dangers. Jump, run, and quickly inflate the red balloons. Um, right, so that's pretty much this game in a nutshell. Um, when it says it's inspired by classic arcade games, they're not kidding. Uh, like, it, and it's not just the gameplay either. Like, uh, if you're looking at the footage, uh, you'll see... Yeah, th this game would not have been out of place in arcades, say... I want to say circa 1981 to 1985. Um, really an invocation of... Like, this is something early Capcom would have published, or Konami, um, Sega, even, like... I could even see, like, Nintendo um, being involved here. Um, maybe late 80s. Uh, like, it's, um, like, it's just more like mid 80s because of where the gameplay is. Because, yeah, this, this game has got some really simple uh, uh, gameplay. And in terms of its graphics, like, this is about what the, uh, you know, this is what we were seeing in arcades in like the mid eighties. Um, uh, it is hard to do a, like a one-to-one, -one, uh, style comparison without like, like doing extensive footage analysis and, you know, and, um, technical details like that. And we are so not equipped for that. And, even if we were, Tamiq is just not all that interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like of uh, all the arcade games I can think of, uh, the two that come to mind, like um, I'd say, it reminds me a lot of Snow Brothers. If anyone else remembers that, um, but. Also, like Donkey Kong, like or Donkey Kong Junior, like you know, it's just kind of lacking a story. Or there are definitely uh, another... some mechanics here that are along the lines of like Burger Time. Or... Yeah, yeah, you know, something like that. Or um, Flicky's another one. Or oh, Man Flicky. <laughs> you know, like it's something in that mold. But I will give it credit for being. Um, it like like uh, its own game. Like I I can't think of a actual uh, mid '80s arcade game that had you popping balloons. Like I'm just saying that this is the kind of premise that totally uh, would have been in the arcades in the mid '80s. Late '80s. That's when you're moving towards more elaborate um, arcade games. You know, more final fights. Um, and narcs and forgotten worlds and you know even like commando and nikari warriors and you're seeing less of like this kind of one screen yeah single screen game. puzzle type action this would have been considered to be outdated in the later half of the 1980s mm -hmm. you know and and if it seems like we are focusing in a lot on the presentation of this, that's because, um, like a lot of those arcade games of yore, um, 
the interest and appeal of this game is pretty limited. Um, especially in, in a non-arcade setting. Because, you know, while I won't say that this game never evolves, because it does, you know, but at the end of the day, you are still doing the same thing um, on all the levels. You, you know, you are popping the blue and red balloons, you're avoiding the enemies. Um, none of that really changes. It, you know, the levels will change. The enemies will change. And that's, you know, its own dynamic um, difficulty. And this game does have, uh, like, a second round mode where it gets more difficult. There's more red balloons. Um, but honestly, I found the game only really compelling to beat once. And, of course, you know, like, the, the big challenge is uh, the score. Because, like, you do have unlimited continues like you would an arcade game, but also like an arcade game, if you continue, you lose all your points. Like, um, so it's got all the elements there. It's just, you know, you take that outside of an arcade environment, and it's much less interesting. You know, like... It, even when the like when like say this game was from 1985 and got ported to the NES in say 86 or 87, um, it would have been still like the same mildly interesting game or completely repackaged into something longer, more elaborate, um, a deeper storyline, and barely recognized as the same thing. There are a lot of NES games like this. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's fine. It, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, and if you're of the, you know, s the beauty of video games is in the simplicity of gameplay, this is go probably going to appeal to you. And I know there are people out there who are those kind of people. But I'm of the opposite of op opinion when it came when it comes to the evolution of video games it's like video games had to get more interesting um in order to survive in spaces like uh at home either mm -hmm. in front of the living room or on the computer especially on the computer um mm -hmm. because you know these are just devices you were in front of for longer periods of time um it's also same kind of shit happened in movies and television. Like you, you go back to the dawns of those mediums, and everything is uh, so much more primitive. You know, when you could impress people with just the simple movement of uh, stuff on screen. But eventually, novelties like that wear out, and you've got to provide deeper experiences. Um. Anyway. Uh, so, Petty Fan's been playing the PlayStation 4 version, so I'll turn it over to him for his particular thoughts on Tammy Q. Honestly, I'm kind of the opinion that this seems more like an appetizer than an actual game. Mm. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know, it's not an appetizer to a game, or at least... This is the kind. This is this is a full fledged gaming experience of the period that it's aiming for. Yeah, like, it wants to be an early '80s arcade game, and it went all in on that. The problem is, early arcade, you know, early '80s arcade games and arcades in general aren't that deep most of the time. Mm -hmm. And if they are, we're talking, you know, we're talking like arcade games from the '90s. Right. And beyond. You know, not for, like, you know, stuff from the early 80s. Yeah, okay, they're maybe more advanced than, say, Space Invaders or um, Asteroids, but you're still in that, you know, you're still in that simplicity of gameplay. You know, it's still the era of, like, Defender and Donkey Kong. Hell, Donkey Kong was a 
revelation in 1981 because it actually figured out how to do a narrative story in video games. That's, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and I mean, it's like Donkey Kong's considered to be like the first video game story. Not true because, first of all, that would be ignoring the PC branch side of things, which was already, which was very much a thing even in like 81. You know, like by eighty one, we had things like Colossal Cave Adventures, uh, the Zork series, and onward and onward. You know, and all that adds up to is a game that's much more interesting to talk about in terms of historical context than its actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like um, the premise here. Once again, it's perfectly serviceable for what it's going for. It's just. Yeah, this game held my interest for about a half an hour, which is what you would expect from an arcade game back in the day. Uh, maybe that would be um, an extravagance for a game of the vintage I'm talking about. Here. You know, arcade games are short and fairly shallow because you know you're you're not ex you know you're expected to be playing an arcade game for you know a few minutes, maybe like a half an hour, an hour. Um, at least in the 80s. You know, mastery of, like, and if you are mastering video games, well, you're doing the high score thing. You know, mm -hmm. and that comes in here. Mastery of this particular video game comes from maximizing score. You know, it's getting all the balloons. It's knowing when to pop the red balloons um, when they're lighting up. It's Overall the, route optimization, stuff like that. Yeah, it's getting all the candies. It's that kind of gameplay. Um, it's the game, you know, it, it's the gameplay loop of the early 80s. I'm just, you know, we are saying there's nothing wrong with this, you know, inherently. It's just, you know, this game just doesn't have any staying power. Yeah, it's an early video game style game. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're, you know, unless you're intently focused on score and you know, that has limited appeal, even with leaderboards. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say that score is as pointless as it once was ever since, you know, online leaderboards became a thing, but it's still definitely not the emphasis um, that it had in the uh, in the arcade days. Because, well, um, um, how do I put this? Um, high scores were the maybe not loop boxes of their day but it was definitely the skinner box of its day you know it's that mind manipulation that got people to plunk down more quarters in the arcades yeah you bragged about having the high score plaque in front of the restroom at your local arcade uh -huh. um and you know like i said it's far that, that, that to say if you're not the alternately you're the kind of person who enjoys that you could be the person who uh Gets the high score just so that they can make sure the top initials on the score on the on the that the game displays are bum or ass or yes insert whatever three letters you can come up with something derogatory mm -hmm. or deek ah uh, yes yeah. yes or sex you know I... the point is you got to choose three letters that everybody else saw on the attract mode mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> anyway um in terms of pricing uh it's typical ratalikia pricing it's five dollars oof um yeah. at least on the like on the pc it's um regular price is actually a bit more it's 5.99 um it does have a joyce on collection bundle with, or where it comes with another game that we um have not covered so can't really speak to that but yeah yeah, I, yeah. For, for once the rattle price is like maybe a little high for now mm -hmm. i mean it's not terrible but at the same time you can also get an arcade bundle pack for that price yeah maybe mm -hmm. a bit more but yeah like uh, you know like i got a lot the konami classic games you know uh via a sale for five dollars each Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granted, I think that, um, when I got uh, Tammy Q, it was on sale for like three twenty-five, three fifty, something like that. Which is pr 
probably the um, price range that's better suited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Overall, like, I like this game's presentation. Um, I don't really care for its gameplay. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah, it, do- it does look very genuinely 8-bit. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there might be some cheat colors in there. Oh, yeah, there are some definitely yeah. cheat colors. Playing this yeah. from real life can <laughs> confirm. Yeah. Um, it also has the option for CRT scan lines. If you want to vomit. Uh-huh. I'm like... Um, but yeah, it, it's... Like I said, um, it excels really well in what it achieves to do. It's just... Uh, what it achieves to do isn't all that interesting in the modern day. Mm-hmm. You know? So, worth noting on that uh, scale. Anyway, that'll about do it for TamiQ here. Um, be sure to tune in after the break as the Galax will be reviewing Kingdom Tales 2. <laughs> <laughs> 